For our second example with integer division and modular arithmetic, I'd like us to be able to take in a total number of minutes and convert that number of minutes to a total number of days, hours, and remaining minutes. As sample input to our function, we're going to use 500,000 minutes as an input. If you're familiar with the movie Rent, you'll know that 525,600 minutes defines a year. So 500,000 minutes should be just shy of a year. But by exactly how much is something our program will find out. Before coding, it's helpful to think of how we might solve this problem ourselves if we're doing it on pencil and paper. This can really motivate our code. So if I were solving this problem with pencil and paper, the first computation I would do is a computation to determine exactly how many minutes there are in a day. To determine this value, I'll take the number of minutes in an hour, 60, and multiply it by the number of hours in a day, 24, to get a value of 1440. If I then perform a standard division of 500,000 divided by 1440, I get the decimal number 347. 0.22222 repeating. And from looking at this value, I can tell that there are 347 whole days in 500,000 minutes. And because I have some decimal value here, we see that 500,000 minutes is not exactly a whole number of days, but there is some remaining number of minutes that can be broken down further into hours and minutes. To determine exactly how many minutes are remaining, on pencil and paper, I would do an intermediate computation where I determine exactly how many minutes there are in 347 days. This is done through the computation 347 times 1440, which yields a value of 499,680. It follows that the remaining number of minutes is the total number of minutes, 500,000, minus the exact number of minutes in 347 days, 499,680, which is 320 remaining minutes. Once I have that intermediate value of 320 remaining minutes, all computations are a little easier. I have now reduced this very large problem to a smaller problem of simply saying, how many hours and minutes are there in 320 minutes? Because there are 60 minutes in an hour, there are 320 divided by 60 equals 5.33333 hours in the remaining 320 minutes. Looking at that value, 5.33333, I can determine that there are five whole hours in 320 minutes. And because I have this decimal of 0.33333, I can see that 320 is not going to be exactly some number of hours. It's five whole hours with some number of minutes remaining. On pencil and paper, to determine exactly how many minutes remain, I would first compute exactly how many minutes make up five hours, computed via 60 times five, or 300, and I would subtract this value of 300, the number of minutes in five hours, from my total number of minutes, 320. This tells me that there are 20 remaining minutes. And so altogether, 500,000 minutes is 347 days, five hours, and 20 minutes. This seems reasonable given that 525,600 minutes should be 365 whole days. And it gives us a specific value to check on our program. The code for our program in lines seven through nine is simply the setup declaring an integer variable called total minutes and prompting the user to enter this value. Line 11 creates a temporary variable called remaining minutes that has an initial value equal to what is entered by the user for total minutes. The purpose of this remaining minutes variable is to do those sorts of running computations that we were doing when we worked this example by hand. In line 14, you'll see an integer division performed on the right hand side of the assignment operator that takes our remaining minutes, initialized to be our total minutes, and performing an integer division by 1440, where the 1440, if you'll recall, is the total number of minutes in a day. Therefore, the value that is assigned to the variable num days is 
the total number of whole days in the variable total minutes. When run on the input 500,000, line 14 should lead to a value of 347 being assigned to num days. Upon determining the whole number of days in our total number of minutes, we then performed a computation to determine the remaining minutes that were not used up by this whole number of days. The computation being done on line 15 is doing precisely that. We are reassigning a value to the variable remaining minutes, and the value we are reassigning is that remaining number of minutes after accounting for the whole number of days. And that value was found more difficultly on pencil and paper, but can be performed more simply in a computer program with our mod operator that you see right here. When run on an input of 500,000, line 15 should reassign a value of 320 to remaining minutes. Lines 16 and 17 aim to repeat a similar process from lines 14 and 15, but this time determining the number of hours involved with those remaining minutes. In our example, we can think of the value of remaining minutes as being 320. We determined the number of hours by taking that number of remaining minutes, dividing it by 60, and rounding down. This is accomplished in line 16 with the integer division that you see on the right-hand side of the assignment operator. When run on our input of 500,000, line 16 should assign an initial value of 5 to the variable num hours. Last but not least, we need to figure out the number of minutes that remain after accounting for the minutes that make up a whole number of hours in line 16. While done via a combination of multiplication and subtraction on pencil and paper, again we see the power of the mod operator in computer programming. We can determine this number of remaining minutes more directly with our mod operator, and when run on an input of 500,000 for total minutes, the value assigned to num minutes should be 20. Lines 19 and 20 simply display our computations to the user so they can see the output of the program. Indeed, if we run our program and enter a value of 500,000 minutes, the output is 347 days, 5 hours, and 20 minutes as expected. While running our program with an input of 525,600 minutes, does in fact give us exactly 365 days.